Hello, I'm Eric Hanley, an Automation Specialist with ES&E. In this video, we are going to go through the Network Address Translation Configuration on the Stratix switches that have the new Cisco operating system. Network Address Translation, or NAT, is used when we need a device to communicate on a different network while still allowing the physical equipment address to be unchanged. In our demonstration, we will be using the Stratix 5800, but this will be the same interface as the Stratix 5200. With all Stratix managed switches, they utilize a Layer 2 NAT, which means that they need to have translations for both public to private and private to public to enable bi-directional communications. The switch is set up in three steps. The first step is to create a NAT table. Within the NAT table, we need to provide the actual physical address of the equipment on the private side, then provide what the translated address will be on the public network. This will allow the public network to see the IP address of the translated IP on the public network. In our example, we will be translating a PLC from 192.168.110 to 10.6.10.10. Also, we will want to include our switch since we would like to see the switch on our public network. Those addresses will end in .13. Now, we will add public to private translations. This allows us to translate a public address such as an engineering workstation into the local private network. The address within the local network must not be used by any other private network hardware. We will add a laptop translation from 10.6.10.251 to 192.168.1.251. In the NAT table, you will also see a checkbox for gateway. This allows you to translate a public gateway into a local gateway. This is necessary if you have a layer three routing switch on the public side and you do not want to add every address for every piece of equipment into the NAT table. Since our demo does not have a full network, we will not need to add a gateway translation, which means we have set up our NAT table. The second step is to now assign these translations to a public port. On the Stratix 5800, you can use G11 or G12. Both of these are SFP ports and therefore require a SFP to copper adapter to show our working system. The Stratix 5200 still has combo ports, which means that you can use SFP for fiber or use the provided copper port. To assign the NAT to the port, we need to press the Assign Interface button. Then we will select the proper port from the drop-down menu to assign the table that is being used on that port. Once we select Apply, we can now test our system. I will change my IP address from 192.168.1.251 to 10.6.10.251 and make sure that I see both the switch and the PLC using Factory Talk links. Once we verify the communications are working, we can see both IP addresses of the PLC in links. Now we can move to the third step where we need to reload the switch. Reloading the switch configuration is a step that is often overlooked. This step will force the current configuration into the switch and reboot the switch to ensure it maintains the configuration through a power cycle. This may take several minutes and it does stop all communications, but it is necessary. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please contact your local ES&E account manager or automation specialist.